Blessed evening, church. Welcome back to part number five on the Lord's Prayer. I hope you've been enjoying learning about the Lord's Prayer. If you're joining us for the first time, I would encourage you to watch the previous episodes of one, two, three, and four. Today is our last one I'm going to share with you. We're going to focus on the last verse of the Lord's Prayer. I hope you've enjoyed learning this. I know it has been a blessing to many. It has been a blessing to me as well, teaching this to you uh, on, on the importance and the understanding of the Lord's Prayer. And I know many of you have met me after church on Sundays and told how much uh, that study has meant a lot to you and how it has opened your eyes to see things in a very different way and a different perspective. Uh, which is what studying the Word of God is all about, isn't it? Right? So, before we get into the study, let's say a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for today. We thank you for another day we can come together and study your Word, Father. We thank you, Lord, for each and everyone that is viewing today, Lord. I pray for your special blessing over them, Father God. I pray, God, that you'll open our inner ears and our hearts to receive what you have for us, what you're going to teach us today, Lord. And I pray, God, that through me, that you will speak through, not my voice, but yet your voice be heard, Father. Not my words, but your words will go forth, Father. And I pray, Lord, you will bless this time together as we get together and study your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's get back. So if we look in where our focus passage is Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, the latter end of verse 13 is what we are going to be looking at. Right, but before we get into that, I just want to touch base on, we've been learning on God, the, the Lord's Prayer. We've talked about, hallowed be your name. And last week, we did a very important one on, you know, not leading us into temptation, keeping us from evil, you know. And the previous one, we learned about forgiveness, how important that was. And there were so many testimonies I heard of people who, who put it into practice and have seen healing that has taken place. And I know uh, there are many of you watching as well who are able to use that part and forgive people and watch how God releases healing into your life, right? Okay, so the Lord Jesus Christ, you all of us know, He is the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. This is something we all know of, right? As such, we see how marvelously He also brings about completion in the Lord's Prayer by giving all glory, honor, and praise to God. You see, we saw at the start of the prayer as well how He, he gave glory, hallowed be your name, and He praise the father and then we came that and then the end also now how he gives glory to god as well at the end as well right so in the prayer the beginning the lord jesus began by offering adoration and worship to the father and wraps it up also in the same manner so in our teaching we've come to the final segment of this of the lord's prayer right where we acknowledge the glorious power and majesty of the heavenly father right he is not someone who can be created the Heavenly Father is not someone who can be created or who lives within the bounds of time. He is the self-existing one, the creator of time who deserves our worship. See, in this part of the prayer, we see the joy and admiration that the Lord Jesus has for the Father. And he makes his boast about his Father's glory. We're going to see that. All right. So let's turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 13 the latter end of it it says and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen right right so for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen right so after having made the petition asking the father to deliver us from evil the Lord Jesus goes on to state the reason as to why he is able to make this request. Right? We're going to see that. See, he clearly states that the kingdom belongs to God and not anyone else. That is what he's professing. The kingdom of God belongs to God only, not to anyone else. Not to me, not to anyone else. Therefore, the devil is powerless. Right? Ultimately, even the devil's rule and reign is temporary. Because the overall universal kingdom at present and the coming kingdom all belong to the Father. Okay? So since the kingdom is His, He is the only King who has the supreme authority and power to deliver us from all evil. Christ openly makes His boast saying, Yahweh, the Father is King. So because the kingdom belongs to God, right? 
Therefore, he has all supreme power to deliver us from evil. That's why we ask the Lord to deliver us from evil. Not by our works, not by what we do. No saints can deliver you from evil. Only God can. Because the kingdom doesn't belong to those who went before us. So it belongs to God. So we need God to deliver us, not anyone else. Do you understand that? So let's look at it in the Jewish understanding. See, if we actually look at the entire Lord's Prayer, we see that Jesus taught us to pray in an entirely Jewish manner. If you look at the structure of the Lord's Prayer, we've been looking at the Jewish understanding. If you follow through the series, you will know how I brought about the Jewish teachings and the understanding on their prayer methods and how they do it. So if you see this, Jesus taught us this prayer according to Jewish prayers. See, the first three phrases of the prayer is the sanctification of God. Holy name, right? God's holy name. The sanctification of God's holy name. How holy is his name is what the first three phrases talk about. The middle part refers to the essential petitions that we do. Give us this day our daily bread. Give, forgive us our sins. Lead us not in temptation. The middle part, the middle chunk of it is about the petitions, right? Like found in ancient Jewish prayers. Remember in the previous episodes I talked about the Jewish prayers, how these petition prayers are so important to these Jewish people and they pray it all the time. See, and the conclusion is similar to the praises King David offered at the dedication of the first temple recorded in 1 Chronicles 29, 11 to 13. If you look at 1 Chronicles 29, 11 to 13. All right. If you say that, Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and in earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Right? I think the version is NKJV. But if you look at NIV, uh, it talks about it in a, in, a, in a nice way. It talks about how David is dedicating his first temple and what he says to God. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory. And the victory. He's giving all those attributes to God. For all that is in heaven and in earth is thine. Everything is his. Thine is the kingdom. O Lord, thou art exalted as head above all. Can you see a similarity between this, what David spoke to God when he dedicated the temple, and what's in the Lord's prayer? Can you see the similarity of that? See, it's beautiful how Jesus sits on David's throne and is also known as the son of David. See, he teaches the same style of wrapping up the prayer. How he taught it. He brought about that similar thing which David spoke to God when wrapping up the prayer, the Lord's Prayer. See, like most Jewish prayers, the Lord's Prayer too ends with Amen. The word Amen means truly or surely. It comes from the root word aman, meaning to nourish, support, and to make sure and strong. This is also why in English, amen means so be it. All right, we all understand amen means so be it, right? Right, but the Jewish thing, it comes from the word aman, all right? So let's look at this. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. See, the Lord Jesus did not come into this world to establish a kingdom of his own. Easily he could have done it. But he never came to establish his kingdom. He came to establish God's kingdom. See, he set an example for all leaders and servants of God in the world today, showing that we are not here to build our own kingdoms. Now, if you find a lot of Christian teachers and preachers, what's happening is they are building their own kingdom. Preaching God's kingdom, building their own kingdom. So is it correct? Jesus spoke God's kingdom and built his kingdom. That was his humility he had. See, the Lord Jesus came to proclaim the kingdom of God and Father. See, even in the doxology, if you have been to like the Methodist or Anglican church, you know about this doxology, right? Jesus never took any glory for himself. But gave the Father all the glory because the kingdom belongs to the Father. 
even though Jesus is one with the Father, he still humbled himself and gives the glory to God the Father. Isn't that a beautiful thing of Jesus? He is one with the Father, but still he humbly honors God. How much more we, his creation, should honor God? We are not one with the Father. But do we honor him? We preach him. He gives us his blessing. He gives us his anointing. He releases his gifting on our lives. But what do we do? We use all what he gives us, what he bestows upon us, and build a name and a kingdom for myself. Is that what God wants us to do. We build a name for ourselves. We build a kingdom for ourselves. At the end of the day, we, we, we acquire worship for ourselves. Then That is wrong. It's biblically wrong. Perfect example is Jesus. See, a real king on earth has a kingdom with royal subjects. He has the power and he is extremely particular about not letting anyone tamper with his honor. See, these are temporary kingdoms ruled by men who have limited lifespan and whose kingdom is limited to specific region on a globe. However, with regard to our Heavenly Father, we see that his kingdom is established in heaven and earth is his footstool. His kingdom is in heaven. Earth is his footstool. All right. His kingdom is vast beyond time and space it is an eternal kingdom right it's not something that we are you can have a grab hold of the lord jesus spoke about the coming kingdom where god will be among men and reign and rule on earth just like in heaven right if you follow the end time studies you would have learned about this therefore there is nothing that the enemy can do to stop that from happening. There is nothing that can happen. Stop that from happening. Kingdom of God coming and ruling on earth. That's nothing's going to stop that. The devil's kingdom is powerless. It has no glory. And it is not eternal. Just as King David said. The greatness. The majesty. The glory. The honor. And the final victory. All belongs to God. Because Yahweh is king. All of that belongs to God. He is king. He rules over all. That is him. See, in the light of this, it would be foolish for any of us to try and play God or try to steal his glory. You would find many Christian preachers trying to do that. They are trying to play God and trying to take the glory that belongs to God to himself. Through this concluding part of prayer, the Lord Jesus made it very clear that we too, like him, have to be humble and understand that everything belongs to God, including our very lives. The breath you have even belongs to God. That is how much we eat. Everything belongs to God. Whatever God uses you to do, if God uses you to do mighty things even on this earth, in this earth, in this world, Still, learn to give that glory back to God. Never take it for yourself. Never acquire the praise of man. Release it to God then and there. That is humility. Because that is the humility Jesus carried. That is what he carried. Him being all powerful. That's why God made him sit above everything else. See, in all our service for the kingdom, whether we are teachers, preachers, evangelists, prophets, apostles, or serving in any other capacity, we need to constantly remind ourselves that the kingdom, the power, and the glory all belong to our Heavenly Father. Right? Not only in words, not only in words, but the way we act, our mannerism, everything needs to portray our glory being given to God. See, when we have this in the back of our minds, it becomes so much easier to serve in the kingdom without desire of positions and titles. 
lot of people nowadays want to serve in church because of a position and a title. If you don't get a position, if you don't get a title, oh, this is not a church. This church has no love. This church is not uh, God-oriented. No one came and did this to me. I wasn't given a position. I wasn't given a title. Then that shows, that mannerism, that immaturity shows that you are seeking glory and honor for yourself, not for God. You are not serving God. You didn't come to serve God. You came to serve yourself. So ask yourself this. If you are in service in God's place, in God's house, in the Father's house, ask yourself this question. Am I serving to be recognized? Am I serving to get a position and a title? Or am I serving because I love God? Ask yourself. See, the doxology reminds us that we are called to serve, not to be served. Because we are royal subjects who come under the authority and government of the king of glory. Right? The Lord Jesus brings the prayer to a close with Amen. Revelations 3.14 states that the Lord Jesus is the Amen, the faithful and true witness who has shown us the power and the glory of the one who is to be worshipped forever in spirit and in truth. Right? We see in that. He talks about the Amen, the faithful and true witness. See, an interesting thing to note would be the beginning and the end of the structure of the Bible. If you look at the beginning and the end of the Bible, in Genesis 1 verse 1, we see in the beginning. True? We see that, right? Unless it's a different Bible you have, you know, it says in the beginning, right? And in Revelations 22 1, it ends with Amen. So when we put these two together, for example, the beginning and the end, it reads out as, in the beginning was Amen. We just merge it together, right? The Lord Jesus, who is known as Amen, was there in the beginning. This is also why in John 1, we read, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You all know that verse, right? In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the word was God. So from Genesis to Revelation, it's about the Son being with the Father and giving glory to God, Yahweh God, His Father and King to whom all belongs the kingdom, the glory and all the honor and the victory. See, the thing I love about this is the humility of Jesus. He submitted, number one, he submitted to the Father's will. He came and did everything for, for, the, for God, for Father God. He came as a man. He died on a cross. He did all that. He paid the price. But still, he went through all that, but still he gives the honor to God. That is humility. See, when we serve God, when we serve in the, in the sphere of church or wherever we serve in, do we serve and we do everything? And you sometimes say, you know, pastor doesn't see the work I do. No? Behind the scenes, how much I work, but I never get to go up. I never get a position. I never get to do this. I never get to do that. The moment your mind is questioning that, you need to ask yourself, who am I serving? Are you humble enough to just serve, not requiring attention, not requiring praise, not requiring acceptance, not requiring a position or a title, but you just serve. I'll serve. doesn't matter if I don't get recognized, if I am not seen, I don't care because I am serving God. That is the humility we need to carry. See, before we end, I want to throw out a few questions like I always do for reflection and you know, for the thought to think about. Number one, 
Have I taken time to actually realize how humble the Lord Jesus is? Maybe today you see a different aspect of the Lord Jesus. You've never saw that part of it. Yes, we all know he was humble, but humble enough to give all the glory to God the Father. You know, it, it, it opened my mind into a different place. Second, do I understand that the devil has no power over me because the kingdom actually belongs to my heavenly father? Do you believe and understand that the devil has no power over you? Don't tell me I'm under the devil. No. Because he has no power over you. See, if my earthly father, for example, if my earthly father owns a massive business organization and I share in the business and partner together with him, then an outsider or another business cannot exercise control over me and my work. True? Because you're co-partners with your father. No one else can come and tell you how to do your work. So you've got to understand that. You've got to believe that in faith. How do I see God in my mind? Is he someone who is limited like I am? Or is he someone who is beyond my comprehension and understanding? where I cannot even fathom the extent of his power and magnificence. Does the Lord's prayer empower my faith the way I see my Heavenly Father as a huge impact on my faith and prayer life? If my God is small, my faith will be in man more than in God. True? If my God is great, then my faith will be in him and I will not lean on my own understanding or depend on man's help. How big are you looking at God? Do you think God is small and he fits into a little thing kept aside in your little room or in your table or on your car if you have a little statue of the cross? Oh, that is God. That is Jesus. That's all. He's touchable. He's tangible. He's there. He's there. You think that's small. No, he's huge. He's big. Earth is his footstool. If you think earth is big. Fourth one I would like to ask is, am I a glory seeker? When I serve in the kingdom, do I seek glory and recognition for myself? Or do I make sure to pray and pass all the glory on to my heavenly father? Even when others praise me or appreciate me for my kingdom, my work in his kingdom. Praise is something you'll get. People will come and tell you. But I know when people come and say, oh, pastor, you preached really well, you spoke really well. This, I make sure that very night I go and I say, Lord, these were the praises I got. Lord, all this belongs to you. Nothing is mine. Because I cannot do it without your help, without your anointing in me. I wouldn't have been able to do this. Passing that praise then and there to God is a good habit to have. Because that keeps you humble. Next is, do I see myself as a king of kings, building my own kingdom, making a name for myself and being popular while trying to have control over people? Or do I see God as the almighty king whose kingdom I have been called to build on earth while partnering together with him and giving him the glory and the honor and the worship? Do you see yourself building a kingdom for you? Do you see yourself gathering people, your subjects? Like a political party? Oh, vote for me. No, vote for God. Serve Him. And watch how God will lift you higher and higher and higher. The more humble you are. You know, I always tell these people, you know, wheat, empty grains only stand strong, stand tall. Right? If it's empty, man, it will stand tall like this. But if each grain has weight in it, what happens? It bends. So you decide that what the answer for that parable is. Okay, <laughs> I'm not going to explain it. But <laughs> you will think, am I empty and I said I want to stand strong, tall? Or do I have weight, grain in my way so that I bend? Okay, now that's something for you to think on. All right. So, when I say the Lord's Prayer, do I actually make a boast of my Heavenly Father and proclaim that the kingdom, the glory, the honor, the power belong to Him and Him alone? It's a good way to end. 
when we pray do we end with only our petition sometimes we begin praising god but when we are ending we don't praise god we don't give him all the honor we don't give him all the glory again the lord's prayer was a pattern god gave us to follow jesus gave us to follow this pattern lord be your name honor god do your petition end with giving him all the glory and the honor declare that it is his kingdom that is here his kingdom is the one that rules and reigns lord you have all the glory you have all the honor you have all the power there is nothing in me i am nothing without you god we end in that manner we end on that note we don't end with ane lord please help me lord today amen lord please i need this to work amen no look at the pattern look at the order in which we have it pray your petition after that end with giving honor and glory to god and watch how things change in your life So I hope this has been a, a study that God has taught you some things. Um, I know many of you have learned, and I know from today on, the Lord's prayer is going to be something different when you speak it. And now you can see why the Lord gave us the Lord's prayer. Now you know the pattern, how it needs to happen, how you need to pray using the Lord's prayer as a guide. I hope each day you say the Lord's prayer and now it will make it will give you a different meaning of the Lord's prayer. Shall we close our eyes church and let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we just thank you God. We thank you for what you've taught us Lord. These 5 weeks we've learned on your prayer what you taught us Lord. Lord, we pray especially that you will forgive us if we have taken the glory that rightfully belongs to you father lord i pray that you will forgive us lord if we have acquired that glory and we take that into ourselves lord instead of giving it to you lord forgive us lord and lord i pray whatever capacity we are in that we serve in the kingdom that we will always give the father glory god doesn't matter what we do at what capacity we serve I pray God that every glory every praise that we will give it to God the Father Holy Spirit I ask you right now to give us a heart that is humble like Jesus a heart so that we will not be power hungry God title hungry position hungry but Lord we are trying and we are trying to build our own empire In the name of God, Lord, if that is us, Holy Spirit, give us a humble heart. Break our hearts, Lord, of stone, of pride. We command that spirit of pride to leave God and humble ourselves, even to a point of being corrected and spoken into. Lord, humble ourselves so that Lord, you will lift us up. Lord, I pray and I worship you, God. We give you all the honor. We give you all the power. We give you all the glory because Lord, all of this belongs to you, God. Forever and ever, Lord. There is no end, Lord, to your glory. There is no end to your power. There is no end to your rulership here, Lord. May your kingdom rule and reign, Lord, in our hearts, in our houses, in our workplaces, in our colleges, wherever we go, let us carry your kingdom, Lord. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. And amen. God bless you. I won't see you next week. You might see another beautiful face next week. I'm sure we're going to start a different series. Uh but stay tuned in on Fridays for special Bible studies like this. I hope to join you later on maybe with another study. But may God bless you. I hope this study has enriched you. I hope this study has blessed you. I hope you have learned something. I hope you are closer to God. and you understanding god and you know god in a more deeper and greater way god bless you this evening and i'll catch you later i'll see you on sunday god bless you hear our prayer we are your children and we've gathered here today is we we've gathered here to pray Hear our cry Lord we need your mercy and
Forgive our sins, we pray. 